So I understand that this meeting was planned on the slogan was from was to still. And I am illustrating still, which of course I'm not agreeing with. Because although I am 94, I'm not still working. And anybody who asks me, are you still doing this or that, I don't answer. Because I'm not doing things still, I'm doing it like I always did. I still have, or did I use the word still? I didn't mean that. <laughs> I have my file, which is called to do. I have my plans, I have my clients, I'm doing my work like I always did. So this takes care of my age. I want to show you my work so you know what I'm doing and why I'm here. This was about 1925. All of these things were made during the last 75 years. Well, of course, I'm working since 25, doing more or less what you see here. This is Castleton. This was an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art. This is now for sale at the Metropolitan Museum. This is still at the Metropolitan Museum, now for sale. This is a portrait of my daughter and myself. Well, these are, were some of the things I made. I made hundreds of them for the last 75 years. How I call myself a maker of things. I don't call myself an industry designer because, among other things, industrial designers want to make novel things. Novelty is a concept of commerce, not a aesthetic concept. The industrial design magazine, I believe, is called um, Innovation. Innovation is not part of the aim of my work. Well, makers of things. We are make things more beautiful, more elegant, more comfortable than just the craftsmen do. I have so much to say, I have to think what I'm going to say. <laughs> well, to describe our profession otherwise, we are actually concerned with the playful search for beauty. That means the playful search for beauty was called the first activity of man. Cyril Smith, who was a mathematic professor at MIT, wrote that playful search for beauty was man's first activity, that all useful qualities and all material qualities were developed from the playful search for beauty. These are tiles. The word playful is a necessary aspect of our work because actually one of our problems is that we have to make, produce lovely things throughout all of life. And this for me is now 75 years. So how can you, without drying up, make things with the same pleasure as a gift to others for so long. The work playful is therefore an important part of our quality as designer. 
And let me tell you some about my life. As I said, I started to do these things 75 years ago. My first exhibition in the, in the United States was at the Susquecentennial Exhibition in 1926, where the Hungarian government sent one of my hand-drawn pieces as part of the exhibit. My work actually took me through many countries and showed me a great part of the world. This is not that they took me, but I, the work didn't take me. I made the things particularly because I wanted to use them to see the world. I was incredibly curious to see the world and I made all these things which then finally do did take me to see many countries and many cultures. I started as an apprentice to a Hungarian craftsman. And this taught me what the, the guild system was in Middle Ages. The guild system, that means when I was an apprentice, I had to apprentice myself in order to become a pottery master. In my shop where I studied or learned, there was the <coughs> traditional hierarchy of master, journeyman, unlearned worker, and apprentice. And I was the apprentice. The work as an apprentice was very primitive. That means I had to actually learn every aspect of making pot pottery by hand. We mushed the clay with our feet when it came from the from the uh, hillside. After that, it had to be kneaded. It had to then go in kind of a mangle, and then finally, it was prepared for the for the uh, uh, throwing. And there, I really worked as an apprentice. My my master took me to set ovens because I was part of this was part of oven making, oven setting in the time. And finally, I had I received a document that I had accomplished my apprenticeship successfully, that I had behaved morally, and this do document was given to me by the guild of roof coverers, well diggers, oven setters, chimney sweeps, and potters. <laughs> I also got at the time a workbook which explained my rights and my working conditions, and I still have that workbook. First, I set up a shop in my own garden and made pottery which I sold on the marketplace in Budapest. And there I was sitting and my then boyfriend, I didn't mean it was a boyfriend like it is meant today, but my boyfriend and I sat at the market and sold the pots. My mother thought that this was not very proper, so she sat with us to um, add propriety to this activity. <laughs> However, after a while, there was a new factory being built in Budapest, a pottery factory, a large one, and I visited it with several ladies and asked all sorts of questions of the director. Then the director asked me, 
why do you ask all these questions? And I said, I also have a pottery. So he asked me, could he please visit me? And I, finally he did and explained to me that what I did now in my shop was an anachronism, that the Industrial Revolution had broken out and that I rather should join the factory, where he made an art department for me, where I worked for several months. However, everybody in the factory spent his time uh, at the art department. The director, the uh, they said there were several women uh, um, casting and producing my designs now in molds, and this was sold also to the to the to America. I remember that it was quite successful. However, see the, the, the director, the chemist, uh, model maker, everybody concerned himself much more with the art department, that means with my work, than making toilets. So finally they got a letter, they got a letter from the center, the, from the bank who owned the factory, said make toilets setting behind the art department, and that was my end. So this gave me the possibility, because now I was a journeyman, and journeymen also take their satchel and go to see the world. So as a journeyman, I put an ad into the paper that I had studied, that I was a down-to-earth pot, potter's journeyman, and I was looking for a job as a journeyman. And I got several answers. In the, I accepted the one which was farthest from home and practically I thought halfway to America and that was in Hamburg. Then I first took this job in Hamburg at a art pottery where everything was done to, on the wheel and so I worked in a shop where there were several potters and the first day I was coming to take my, well, my place at the turntable. There were three or four turntables, and one of, the, the, one of them behind where I was sitting was a hunchback, a deaf mute hunchback, who smelled very bad, so I doused him in coal or cologne every day, which he thought was very nice, and therefore he brought bread and butter every day, which I had to eat out of courtesy. The first day I came to work in this shop, there was on my, on my wheel a surprise for me. My colleagues had thoughtfully put on the sh on the on the wheel, uh, where I was supposed to work, very nicely modeled natural men's organs. <laughs> after, after I brushed them up very, with a hand motion, they were very, I finally was now accepted and worked there for some six months. This, shop, this was my first job. If I go on like this, you will be here till midnight. <laughs> <laughs> so I will try to speed it up a little. Yeah. Eva, we have about five minutes. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. I am well, sure. If you are sure, I have to tell you that within five minutes I will talk very fast. And actually, my work took me through many countries because I used my work to fill my curiosity. And among other things, other countries I worked was in the Soviet Union, where I worked for, from 32 to 37, actually to 36. 
I was finally there, although I had nothing to do, I was a foreign expert. I became art director of the China and glass industry, and eventually was with Stalin's, under Stalin's purges. At the beginning of Stalin's purges, I didn't know that hundreds of thousands of innocent people were arrested, so I was arrested quite early in Stalin's purses and spent 16 months in a Russian prison. The accusation was that I had successfully prepared an attentat on Stalin's life. This was a very dangerous uh, accusation. And if this is the end of my five minutes, I want to tell you that I actually did survive, which was a surprise. <laughs> but since I surprised, I survived and I'm here, and since this is the end of the five minutes, I will... Tell me when your last trip to Russia was. Weren't you there recently? Oh, this summer, in fact, the uh, Royal Factory, which was bought by an American, com uh, by an American com um, company, invited me. They found out that I had worked in '33 at this factory, and they came to mesh my uh, studio in Rockland County and brought the 15 of their artists to visit me here, and they invited myself to come to the Russian factory last summer in July to make some dishes, uh, design some dishes. And since I don't like to travel alone, they also invited my daughter, son-in-law, and granddaughter. So we had a lovely trip to see Russia today, which is not a very pleasant and happy view. Here I am now, if this is the end. Yes, okay.